Club podcast for the books by Tamara Pierce. I'm Risa. And I'm Ariana. And that's the intro. Whee! So, uh, Ariana, what book did we read this time? Damn, we're jumping right into it. Um, we are. <laughs> uh, this month, we read The Realms of the Gods, the fourth and final book in the Immortals Quartet. <laughs> yeah. So, first off, how did we like it? Just in general, before we get into it. Okay. Um, it is very well written. However, I don't care for the story very much. Um, yeah, very, very great. Uh, honestly, like her words flow beautifully yes, in this book. Yes, they do. Technically, this is a very good book. Yes. But I agree. That's t- at least to me, following the like immaculate plot of Emperor May. For real. <laughs> this kind of feels messy and tropey. Yeah. Plot wise. But like you said, like reading it, it's still a fun time because the words are great. Just how she puts everything together. But like, I'm not a huge fan of the plot. I think this is the weakest of the, of the quartet, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually. I, I mean... love Wolf Speaker. I love Emperor Mage. And Wild Magic is okay. But this one's just kind of like, and I think, for me, a large portion of that is the romance subplot. That, yeah, that does tinge a lot of it. So just to preface this, for anyone who started listening to this and doesn't want to listen to some of the stuff, in this book there's a very large age gap relationship of 12 years. So if that's the kind of thing that squicks you out, this is a great time to stop and we'll see you next month with the first test. Yeah, come back for Kel. (laughs) You will not have to worry about that. (laughs) You will not. But yeah, so are we ready to get on our synopsis before we talk about everything else? Um, Yeah, let's fucking do it. Okay. So this one, she had a prologue and an epilogue. Yeah. It's just the epilogue, but now she's starting to include prologues. And you know what? I fucking love it. Legitimately. I just put a note that says prologue. (laughs) And she starts doing that in the Kell books too. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So like, you know what? The lady loves a good prologue and a good epilogue and you know what? I love it too. You do it. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. So the prologue in this one, though, is more like a last time on for <laughs> us, which, you know what? Completely valid because it's been a month since we read the last one. Yeah. Uh, so the book starts with a recap of what's been going on in the series. There was once a magical barrier between the mortal and divine realms, keeping immortals in the divine realms. In the eighth year of John and Thayette's reign, which, by the way, we're we're actually putting in concrete dates now for the first time mm-hmm. in the entire like Tortal Universe series situation. So and stoked. they do not stay that way. She <laughs> retcons a lot of this in the Kell <laughs> books. I just want to put that out there. So we're already retconning it by saying it's the eighth year of John and Thayette's reign that that happened. Because <laughs> if you remember correctly, Prince Rold was nine. Yeah. So and uh, Jonathan definitely took the throne prior to. Yeah. Having a kid, so for sure. Okay, but eighth year um, of their reign, mages from Karthak found the spells to open the gates, and Ozorn used them for his own end, bringing the mortals and uh, to badger his enemies. I thought I said and the badger. I, know, I didn't. <laughs> we'll talk about the badger in the thirteenth <laughs> year of their reign. Ozorn was cornered and turned himself into a stormwing which was in the last book. On the following winter solstice, every mage, academic or wild, in the world, Numer and Dane among them, felt the barrier completely drop. And Numer has this revelation about Dane. Oh my god. He's like, wow, I didn't know I knew this. And now <laughs> I do. <sighs> okay, well. Chapter one. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to bring in the, the, the names of the chapters for these as well. Okay. Because when she names them, it's like, yeah, let's fucking... Yeah, sure. Let's fucking do it. I hate that the fucking table of contents is after the um, acknowledgments in this book. So I have to, like, fucking flip around for it. Okay. Chapter one. Skinners. Ooh. (laughs) Ozorn is ugly and creeping on Dane and Numair through... (laughs) He's just (laughs) ugly. Yeah, he's ugly He's ugly. They're like, oh, he was once beautiful, but now he's this and this and this. It's like, okay, wow, wow. Just fucking... I mean, he's Ozzy Osbourne, so he was never beautiful. (laughs) Well, apparently Tammy thought so, but whatever. Can't, nothing can be said for a uh, taste. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he's, uh, he's creeping on Dane and Numair through some strange black liquid in a bowl. Uh, we learn that, even as a Stormwing, Ozorn is plotting and trying to take over. 
One of Ozorn's new allies complains about his plots not going anywhere quickly. A strangely apt metaphor for the book... <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so Ozorn silences him by magicking the strange black liquid into killing the man. One of a couple of scenes that reminded me of, of Ozorn torturing Tiny New Mare. Yep. <laughs> Ugh. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Too late. Too late. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the last time we saw him, he had no magical c control, but of course, he has more than mastered Stormwing magic, and it seems to have started and seems to have started creating his own type of magic because nobody knows what the fuck that black liquid is, y'all. Um, even now, Numair and his student slash companion Dane are the focus of his entire existence because this guy cannot let go of those who won't bone him. For, <laughs> <laughs> for like literally a breath, maybe a two or three pages, um, we get to see uh, Dane's friends in Tortal. Um, and <laughs> I, I didn't note it in the notes, but uh, there was a really cute scene with um, Dane and uh, pr uh, King Jonathan, Prince Jonathan, <laughs> King Jonathan knocking on wood with their on their heads yeah. at the same time. And I was like, oh, it's like it's a cute little like uh, uncle niece or, or, or big brother relationship. It's like it's real cute. I like it. It is. Um, I like that she's clearly developed a relationship with everyone there. Not that we get to see yeah. a lot of it, but what the fuck I ever. I know. Uh, <laughs> Um, but uh, Dane and Numer are on their way to go after strange, new and strange immortals who will surely impact the plot further down the road and not be quickly removed from the story forever. <laughs> we also note that they are heading out on Midsummer's Day, a time when roads between the realms are open. Numer and Dane survey the area, showing us that what is now normal to them as they have been fighting off immortals for, almost the, for most of the last year. Dane spots their quarry, Skinners, and finds out they're called that because they... Skin things. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> they just like magic the skin away of on animals and it's terrifying. Um, Dane or and Umair no. attempt to kill the group with a magic arrow and find that the creatures are like worms and regrow from their bits. This is unfortunate since they exploded one into ten pieces. Um, the Skinners go after the pair and they are nearly felled when something tries to pull Dane away. Numair fights for her so he, the hands pull them both through the veil to the mortal realm. The veil of the mortal realm. That's, that's <laughs> to the divine realms. To the divine realms, but it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, you, okay. So at the very end of that chapter, I assumed you would say that she then hears her ma and oh. turns around and sees where you're in. And her ma's like, Dane, I'd like you to meet your father. <laughs> and Dane goes, hello, da. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and Sarah's like, "That's all you have for him," and she's like, "I didn't like fuck like bitch, what I, I know him." <laughs> like, what the fuck am I supposed to say? So, uh, in her father's house after awakening, she learns that she's there because it was a great holiday. Um, so her ma and da were able to bring her and Numer, much to Weirin's disappointment, over to the divine realms. Though the journey between realms left them aching and tired, they are both in one piece. <laughs> Through the windows, they see lights flaring in the sky, and they are told that it is from battles between the great gods and Usue? Usue. Yeah, there's an A. There. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Usue, the queen of chaos. Sarah notes that Sarah's her mom, by the way. I know I didn't actually say that. But, yeah, because she's um, Veraladane Sarasri. Remember that, yeah. guys. So she's saying it's been going on since winter, and that's when the barrier fell. After uh, her conversation, Dane's conversation, she <laughs> goes back to sleep. As she's waking up, she hears the voices of allies back home talking about how the enemy seems to know every move before they make it. Go figure. Um, Weird. Wonder how that happened. Oh. She wakes up and meets Broadfoot, the <laughs> first duck mole, a.k.a. platypus. I would die for Broadfoot. Oh, I love him so much. <laughs> Broadfoot is amazing. Um... But uh, I, I will be honest, he, I had completely forgotten about him, and I was so no, excited when he appeared. <laughs> I, I, like, somehow every time I, I just about to set, play this game, read this book, I forget that he exists until I get in it. And then I'm like, oh, Broadfoot, I love you. <laughs> just everything about him is fantastic. Um, uh, he informs her that they've been there for four days already. Uh, so she's just been asleep for four days, basically. Um Dane and Broadfoot go to eat, and she meets Queen Claw, the first cat. Which um, we heard Queen Claw speaking. Yes, in we know of Wolf Queen Claw. Yes, um, but I love her. She's uh, <laughs> like an orange tabby, and she's beautiful, and I love her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Queen Claw spots a shadow, and okay, but my favorite Queen Claw moment—I don't think I actually typed it in—is um, when 
um, Sarah walks away, um, and Queen and Dane is like, "Where's she going?" And Queen Claw is like, "What are you doing? Come pet me!" <laughs> like, what do you think what? you're doing? It's like, "Oh, okay, you Come are a cat." Me. Okay. <laughs> Queen Claw spots a shadow and pounces, bringing back an inky blob of a creature. Sarah does some magic on it and finds out that it is a darking, which none of them have heard of before. Sarah puts it in her pocket, but and she seals the top of the pocket, but it slips out the bottom of the pocket through a hole she totally forgot about. And Dane is like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll let you get away. Why she's, not? She's also just like, that's, that's my mom. Yep. <laughs> Um, Dane then learns that her mother's become a lesser goddess, the Green Lady, um, so that she can, um, live in the Divine Realms with Weirin. Basically, she just, peti- they petitioned for her to be a lesser goddess. Went to, so went, she's, he went to the, the, uh, realm, great of the gods. realm of the Dead and was like, hey, that one, I would like her to come back with me, please. <laughs> so she's the Green Lady. I love yeah. that. Actually, that, that just is so nice to me. So good. <laughs> Dane goes for an ill-advised walk to clear her head. On her walk, she spots a pool of ever-changing liquid. In trance, she goes to touch it and is bitten by the first skink, bringing her out of the trance. The skink, t- fantastic character. Get all of the- honestly, the characters in this book the, are spot on. The I love the, them all. The gods of the people are are phenomenal. <laughs> they are. Um, the skink tells her that it is a chaos vent, which is the gods' windows into the chaos realms, which is like, why do you need those? Um, <laughs> maybe don't have those everywhere? Look, we need vents. <laughs> Otherwise, the chaos realm will die. <laughs> I, that's what I'm like, what is the, why do we have these? Okay, and at least, why is there no, like, force field on them? Right. <laughs> well, like they should why be guarded at chaos? the very least. <laughs> why does chaos just get to come in? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like, you may not have this problem if you stopped having these vents. Yeah. The skink then uh, points out sunbirds to her, mm. which are these beautiful, like, eagle-like birds that from noon to dusk, they just fly around and they, like, fly up to the sun. And then, like, the light catches their wings and it turns into this beautiful, like, flame design. And in that flame design, she sees a vision um, of Fayette and Anwa fighting storm wings. Um, she rushes back to the cottage where she meets Weirin, who gives her a hard time about not eating game for some. He's like, ah, no daughter of mine will, so, like, you know. I'm sorry, did you raise me? sentimental. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, he then spots and shoots a darking, for which Dane scolds him. Then he acts like a jackass conservative lol. Um, <laughs> basically, he's just like, suffering helps people. And Dane is like, oh my god, you sound like those people that think that poor people just need to suffer to be able to, like. It's like, No. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she then informs her mother that she and Numair must get back to the fighting in the mortal realms. Let's be fair. She tells her that a lot. And Sarah's like, no. 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 You can't do it. Can't be done. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like it's very important to note that um, the first she asked the first skink, uh, why are you being so nice to me? Yeah. And the, she says, well, when you were little, you saved a, a nest of, of young skink from being a uh, like pl- tortured, f- tortured by. <laughs> by a bunch of kids and and uh, i i have not forgotten that i like you <laughs> and i love it because that's just that is that is how dane touches the entire world yeah just by like unthinking kindness yeah. and i don't mean that in a bad way no. <laughs> but in a way that like she just does kind kind acts without even giving them a thought. Yeah. And that's the way that she just changes the world around her. And I love her for that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So good. Oh, by the way, that was um, chapter two was <laughs> meetings with gods. I, I was going to say that. I was like, Ooh. apologize. <laughs> uh, now we're on chapter three. Uh, dreams. Ah, yes. As you can tell, this one is going to be chock full of dreams. Okay. So... <laughs> Back on his feet, Dane finds Numair cleaning himself up. Numair suggests that Dane may want to stay with her parents in the Divine Realms. Tired of hearing this, Dane snaps that Tortal is her home, and uh, I love that for her because, like, this wild child found a home that she wants to protect and and people where she she feels like she belongs, and I'm just like, my girl, my baby girl. (laughs) Numair says uh, he would be more content to know that Dane is safe in the home of her ma who loves her and her da whom she can finally get to know. Uh, Dane tells him that she don't give a shit what makes him comfortable. Uh, she has others she loves in Tortal and she will return to them and fight for them. 
which you go, girl. Um, this is very, very similar to um, Jonathan and Alana when they're in the Toussaint War. Yeah, absolutely. How could you do that? <laughs> what? Dude, I'm, I'm your squire, dude. I have to, like, what? <laughs> you want me to not fight? No, no. The that. fuck is wrong with you? Sorry. I am I will never let John live down all of the <laughs> shit he did in the Lion, Song of the Lioness Quartet. Yeah, for real, though. Like, you can be all regal and shit, but he's still the jackass yeah. who basically went to the desert and said, but I'm the best you'll get. Um, <laughs> Fuck you, bro. Fuck right <laughs> off. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, we can't help ourselves from bashing Jonathan, apparently. Uh, I am also not going to be able to help myself from bashing uh, Weirin, by the by. So oh, yeah, y'all definitely. be ready for that. He's he's like prime, <laughs> like deadbeat dad material. For real. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, uh, their squabble, uh, Numer and Dane, uh, <laughs> their squabble is interrupted by a vision appearing in the mirror Numer is using. It shows their friends fighting off unnatural immortals, which are really just lazy creations like a winged ape. Um, <laughs> it's like, okay, w- Wicked Witch of the West, calm down. Uh, Broadfoot infor- informs them that pretty much any rel- reflective sur- relative surface, any reflective surface in this place can be used to watch the happenings of the mortal realm, which Dane should have already figured out because she's she's seen that shit. Um, yeah, but she does not, the penny never drops n- for Dane. Not once. In any, a- no. <laughs> Everybody has to kind of put things together for her. And I love her. Um, <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Pure of hearts, dumb of ass. <laughs> Dane, exhausted from her physical activity, goes to her room to take a nap. She dreams of Rattail, the dead leader of the Long Lake Wolf Pack, whose sister Frostfur took her place. No time for pleasantries, the wolf leads her to a strange scene. The great gods are talking about a threat, the goddess of chaos, Usoe. Dane wakes quickly to the smell of her mother's cooking and a rumbly tumbly, and goes to find <laughs> <laughs> they have a new guest for dinner, Gainel, the god of dreams. What a kawinky dink! <laughs> Weirin informs Dane that... The only way Gainel can speak to the mortals is in the dream realm. Hmm, wonder if that's important. Um, <laughs> Numer asks Weirin about petitioning the great gods to help stave off the immortal forces sieging the humans. Weirin is basically like, that's dumb. They've got their own shit going on. <laughs> I'm not a super fan. I'm not, I'm super not a fan of Dane's daw. <laughs> While they talk, Dane, ever the child, sees the darking her daw shot at her feet un- under the table. Uh, being Dane, she sneaks the being some food. <laughs> One of her random acts of kindness. Exactly. Um, it's to, and it just, it does so much. It does. That random, that random act of, of kindness, like, turns the tide of the entire war. Yep. That's, it's insane. This fucking... <laughs> As if she can sense her daughter acting up, Sarah asks Gainel about the darking, and... And it reali- and realizes it got out. Uh, she's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> um, Gainel admits he has never seen such a thing before. It's something new. That night, Dane returns to the dream of the great gods. She sees gods she recognizes from various cultures. They are in a circle around a creature which keeps shifting shapes in a chaotic manner. They don't explicitly, s- ex- ex- explicitly state it, but we are meant to understand that this is Usoe. Dane asks Rattail, her guide once again, why they don't just kill the creature instead of wasting energy keeping it where it is. Rattail tells her they are forbidden by their parents, Father Universe and Mother Flame. This is how she finally, she really finds out that there are rules in place which keep the gods, which keep the great gods from overstepping, but she doesn't really acknowledge it, just so we're clear. <laughs> oh, Dane wakes up grumpy and asks Broadfoot to show her to a swimming hole. Excitedly, the semi-aquatic mammal obliges. Um, <laughs> while she is communing with the people's gods in the pond, like the first bass and the first minnow, and <laughs> and I love them because they come and they're like checking her out. Um, yeah. A darking comes to Dane and uses its inky black body to show her a vision of Ozorn. Then the vision of Ozorn looks back at Dane. Before Dane has enough time to form thoughts, she feels a strange immortal approaching. The being ends up being a Taurus, a minotaur basically, which is known to rape young women. Oh joy! Yeah, there are no females of their of their species. So, what the fuck else are they gonna do? Rape mortal women? It's like that's rough, buddy. Yeah. Dane. So. <laughs> Dane starts to run from the immortal, but thinks she might lead it to her mother. And given how Sarah died, she will not let that happen again. Never mind her father, a god of the hunt, being there to protect them both. Uh, she stands against the 
beast as it advances on her single-mindedly. After a very tense standoff, uh, Dane puts, it's like several pages of her fending this thing off and it, he's just slowly coming towards her. And, it's, and she's it's, just like using a towel as, as, a, as sling. a sling. It's like, dude. And just fucking like hits it in the windpipe and it chokes it. it like, Ugh. <laughs> like uh, what the fuck? Uh, after a very tense standoff, Dane puts the Taurus down and weeps. Broadfoot, horrified that he brought Dane to such a d- dangerous situation, asks why she is sad, and Dane said that it isn't the immortal's fault because he was just acting within his nature. Something book one Dane would never have thought, so character growth. Look yep. at that. It's growth. It's good. It's good. Uh, she returns to her parents' house to find another, more welcome immortal, Rakosh the Stormwing. Um, Rikosh informs- Her bestie. Her bestie. <laughs> her, her, her friend of me, who she won't admit is her best friend. Like, let's be real. That, yeah. That's what this, this yeah. relationship is. Um, Definitely. And I love them. Uh, Rikosh informs them of the schism between Stormwings. One side is loyal to Queen Barja, their rightful ruler, while the other is loyal to Ozorn, who brought them back to the mortal realm. Following this information and the visions they both have had, Dane and Umer resolve that they have to go back home ASAP. Lesser gods can't go, can't do that outside of major holidays. The great gods uh, are preoccupied with Usoe, and the animal gods can't take mortals' physical matter through just spirits. So they're like, well, we're stuck here. You're stuck. Sorry. Sorry, guys. You're stuck. <laughs> um, sorry, that's me being Sarah. <laughs> yeah. nope, nope, nope. Oh, no, you're stuck. Stay here. <laughs> Let me cook for you. Uh, as Wirren shuts down every suggestion, he notices a Darking climbing up Dane to the table to get to the table. After under Dane's protection, the Darking morphs itself into something dragon-like. Rakosh realizes it is reminding them that the dragons would be able to do it, and adds that they may favor a mortal who's been rearing one of their orphaned young. Uh, Wirren decides to pretend he's a dad and forbids it under the guise of protection. Dane reminds. <laughs> him, I I so don't like to pause, Wirren. To pause right here. My husband was telling me while we were writing this, he's like, you guys were putting so much work into these synopses. You should at least be like putting them up somewhere where people can read them. And I'm like, but they're not um, <laughs> serious. They're very snarky. He's like, yeah, and? <laughs> you know? So, sorry, continue. <laughs> um Dane reminds her parents that people and people alike, <laughs> meaning <laughs> people with a capital P, the animals, uh, need her help. And while she misses her mother terribly, she cannot stay. The animal gods and the immortal back her up and, be- and begin making plans. Rakosh promises to see if the Stormwings can take the mortals across the Sea of Sand. Sea of Sand. Ooh. Very, yeah. Chapter four, nothing fucking happened. <laughs> Love that for us. It's called Travelers. Um... This is the, the extent Badger? of the traveling they do, just so we're clear. There's very yeah. little traveling. So, yeah, it's it's a very bare bones chapter. Uh, <laughs> the Badger and Broadfoot say that they will go with Numair and Dane to the Dragonlands. Weirin gives them personalized weapons, a bow for Dane and a mage's staff for Numair. Delsa draws them a really cool map on, like, the wood table. And then he, like, makes it so that the wood comes off in, like, just parchment, like, bark it's it's really fucking cool it really and is that's that's one I, of those uh visuals that apparently just really stayed with me exactly and i didn't remember that that's where it was from <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it it's it's very burned like i can see that entire scene really well again um, really well written yes <laughs> dane promises sarah that she will come back to visit after a little ways on their journey they find a stowaway darking in dane's pack. The creature nods that it came with them on purpose. Dane puts it in her pocket and they move on. Uh, they reach Temptation Lake, which is the first stop on their weird ass things um, because it's some it, it's like, what is it like? It's like the Odyssey. Okay, I was, I'm just not realizing. It's journey, but to me I was thinking it was more like um, Wizard of Oz. That too. That, it's, it reminds me of Wizard of Oz in the way that we had these stops and things happen. Um, and the winged apes, but, um, yeah, so, um, they stop at Temptation Lake, uh, and go to sleep. Dane, once again, is once again shown the battle between Usoe and the great gods. As she's waking up, she hears a conversation between Ozorn and others. Page 97. (laughs) Because I was like, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to write all this shit down. She grows bat ears to be able to hear it. Oh, right, because it's not actually in her dream. Mm-hmm. Um, but you order what's left to blah, 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 blah. It's basically what happens is that 
Ozorn sent um, a bunch of Stormwings into battle just as, like, cannon fodder, basically. Um, and the Stormwings are coming and being like, what the fuck, dude? And he's like, I don't care. Like, I'm king now. I don't, I don't care. Do you think that matters to me? It's like 11, <laughs> 11 Stormwings died. And he's like, okay. We yeah, have, like, a couple hundred, I mean. Yeah. Uh, and then we learn about Jakul which is a female Stormwing who is uh, important, I guess. I mean, I guess. She's, like, not that important. She's like, not. It's made out to be like she's important, and then she's really not. Um, and they're talking about how, um, like... Okay, and then in a cold, direct voice, um, Ozorn says, Number 14, report your position. Where are you? I can see nothing. So that's very important. Yeah. That's what I wanted to remember. Yes. Uh, Dane fully wakes to Numair's absence and finds him walking into Temptation Lake. Like, what the fuck, dude? Uh, she Bruh. calls out to him <laughs> and he doesn't, like, actually hear her. He, he keeps walking in. So she runs after him and she finds that he's being dragged in and he gets taken under the water and she turns into a sea lion to go after it. And she's also, like, she bites it and she's, like, poisoned by it. And thankfully Broadfoot is there to, like, actually save them. Um... <laughs> So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, actually gets them out of the trance and gets them up to the surface. Um, so that's good. But um, Dane, they find that the lake has been tainted by chaos. So Broadfoot goes to report it. And then they have, they find a second Darking who wants to join them. So oh, they let it. Also, luckily, uh, Dane went and threw up any bits of the uh, creature that got into her. Because otherwise, it would have slowly poisoned her to death. Yeah, because she's part god. Not that it matters, because it, not, nothing not happens. Actually. Nothing comes no, of that. Nothing <laughs> it makes me think of, it makes me think of, you know, in Secret of Shadow Ranch, uh, the Nancy Drew game, for those of you who don't know what that is, there's one part in the beginning of the game where the people who own the ranch you're staying at make it very clear that you have to be aware of flash floods from thunderstorms. <laughs> and it's very important to know this. So important. And it never happens in the entire game. Not a damn time. It really should happen at the end it's when like, you're, be you're, you're, so you're stuck in there with Shorty. And so that's why you have yes, to get him into a thing. That would make sense. However, <laughs> instead, it's just really fucking funny. It's Chekhov's gun that never goes off. <laughs> okay, Sorry continue yes um chapter five, chapter five aptly named the bridge um the company comes to the first bridge um which i love because by the way it is the first bridge that man ever built and when they just stopped using it it just moved to here it just moved to the uh the divine realms and i, I love this bridge oh i didn't mention it but in <laughs> it's the god of bridges you guys it is that's why I forgot to mention that in the previous chapter, they walk by the first oak tree. Oh, yeah, and, that was and fucking she's rad. she's huge and, like, fantastic. Ugh. So plants also have plant gods. I love that for this universe. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, uh, so they come to the first bridge, which seems pretty rickety and is above the terrifyingly named Long Drop Gorge. Broadfoot and the Badger can, because the Badger came with them too. I feel like it looks like we didn't say that. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Um, uh, Broadfoot and the Badger can materialize, materialize on the other side, but the mortals will have to make the unnerving walk of doom. Numair encourages Dane to fly across so she doesn't have to face the fear, but she refuses to let him cross and bear their packs on his own. They are a team, damn it. They are packmates, and Dane will not abandon a packmate. <laughs> um... <laughs> As they are partway across, the Darkings begin to fight. As she tries to break them up, Dane realizes the <laughs> Dane realizes the newer Darking has Ozorn's face and realizes has Ozorn's face. It, it's it's showing Ozorn's face is reflecting in it. There we go. Yeah. Um, and realizes this is how he can find her. To punctuate that, Hurrocks, remember those you guys? They're um they're part hawk and they're part evil Pegasi. Yeah, they're part eagle. Okay, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's right. That's where the horse comes from. Or the the hoe comes from. <laughs> um. That anyway, they come to attack them. Um. <clears throat> oh, but the creepy thing about them is that their eye, they're like horses, but their eyes are forward set in their head. Oh yeah. And that was the same thing with the Tauros. Yeah. Was, yeah, that's fucked up. 
so think of a, like a cow head but with pred- predator eyes yeah oh i don't like that i don't care that for that one terrifying bit. yeah uh <laughs> Dane and Amer fight them off with help from the animal gods, and a third, dro- a third darking drops from one of the Hurrocks onto the bridge. The darking that had been used to spy, oops, anyway, uh, saves Dane's arrows from falling down the gorge, which helps Dane to finish off the at- finish the attackers off. Dane brings the three darkings to the other side of the bridge because she she's like, hey, hey, one who's been with me this whole time, what do you think? Do I? D- d- this one seemed to be uh, ratting on me. What do you think? Should I keep him? Yeah. Okay, great. And what about that one? Should I grab it? I should? Okay, great. <laughs> I love it. And and basically he's king of the <laughs> king of the darkings. Um Dane brings the three darkings to the other side of the bridge and questions them. The darkings show the others that Ozorn made them from his blood and uses them to stay ahead of his enemies. They confirm he has scattered them amongst the armies, and is not, and this is how Ozorn's forces are so triumphant. Uh, but they don't really realize that part until later, but I, I noted, so it's fine. Um, the darkings also show that they are beginning to develop personalities. The first has given itself a golden streak, so she names it Gold Streak. Um... The second is wearing a leaf for a hat. So she names it Leaf because she's a very clever namer. Um, and the she's third. She's not smart, sister. Uh, I just love that it just went, this is my hat now. Um, <laughs> and it's a hat. And it's a hat. And the third is a nervous little thing. So she names him Jelly. I love you, Jelly. I love Jelly. Jelly, I would die for you. Yes. <laughs> They also reveal that Ozorn tortures them, again reminding me of the tiny new mare in the last book, uh, whereas Dane is kind to them. Because uh, when, they're, when they're being asked, you know, like, why, why, why did you guys do this? Why did you betray the man who created you? And, and Goldstreak shows uh, his point of, or its point of view of, of Dane feeding it under the table. And I love it so much. Um, <clears throat> the animal guys gods decide to speak with darkings the darkings while numer and dane sleep dane dreams of rattail again though she has realized it's a guy's and uh, not her dead friend and the gods are surrounding usoe uh dane can see this time that her chaos is spreading because it's like all over the fucking place it's like she sees basically it's like they're all just caught up in a constant head to head and and they're not bothering to learn anyway dane declines to care because the gods aren't helping them the dream trouble the dream doubles down and reminds her that the chaos will spread and gives her a vision of Sarah and Badger being engulfed by Usoe. And so she's like, oops, hmm, that's not good. I guess I have to care about I this. I guess I do have to care about it because there are people I love here now. Book. Dana wakes to hear Ozorn's voice ordering the three darkings to submit to him. They have hidden themselves in Dane's belt pack so that he can't see where they are. Because they're good. Uh... Okay, so here is where Numer actually realizes that the Darkings are being used against the Tortalan plus army, because I, ca- I can't go over how many fucking countries are involved in this. Anyway, um, and uh, Dane begs Badger to warn them. Goldstreak perks up and gives himself its, itself a mouth <laughs> and says, I go! <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> I go if you stay. No, um. no, no. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> so, uh, Goldstreak decides that, uh, so, sorry, chapter six. Um, chess game. Chess game, right. Because, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, um, Goldstreak decides that he's just going to start talking now, which I love, and volunteers to go with the badger. <laughs> okay, question. The, the badger doesn't get a cool name. I was like, so glad Kling you, pu- you and put- Broadfoot. Like, why does he not have, why is he just the badger and they're not the duck mole? Like, does he have a secret name? Does he just not tell Dane? Did Dane just never ask? <laughs> I is no one assume- on first name basis with the badger? I feel like the badger is like, I don't need a goddamn name. I am the first fucking badger. And yeah. Broadfoot's like, I am a friend. <laughs> <laughs> But in an Australian accent. Oh yeah, yeah. Good day, mate. I mean, yeah. He literally says good day at the towards the end of the book. I'm like, yeah. This is just an Australian platypus. It's a little Australian platypus. Uh, sorry, that's my. It's still. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, they go to find all the darking the darkings and turn them over from Ozorn's side to theirs. And then I say, oh no, the edible hit. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, 
They arrive at their next landmark, Mauler's Swamp. I will forgive Tammy for using marsh as a synonym for swamp because not everyone understands the differences between swamps, marshes, fens, and bogs. <laughs> so, like, I guess she gets a pass, but you've already named it a swamp. You can't then say the marsh, like, you can't do that. It's a swamp, not a marsh. <sighs> it's very... <sighs> Sorry. Uh, Broadfoot explains that Mauler is the first of the link between crocodiles and dinosaurs, which, like, fucking awesome, dude. So basically... Uh, it's fucking rad. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the, the crocodile thing from, um, Lake Placid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Mauler teases them, because of course he does, uh, <laughs> but he doesn't actually attack. He just, like, fakes them out. Um, it's a very, like, uh, two-for-flinching kind of thing, <laughs> um, honestly. <laughs> but um, just, he doesn't actually do it, so, like, what a bro. Um, I feel like, he, and, and this is this is future knowledge, I feel like uh, he knows about um, uh, Numer's dealings with uh, the first... Uh, Zakoi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they make camp in the swamp. After the swamp, and both Dane and Umer are brought to a giant chessboard um, by Gainal in their dreams. Gainal uses it to show them what U- Usoe, I cannot say it, is doing, and how Ozorn is one of her pawns, while Dane and Umer are the pawns of the great gods, which she's not super offended by this, by being a pawn. I would be. I'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> if you're going to in, like include me in this weird chess game, at least make me like a knight or a right? bishop. Like, oh, sorry, high priests. Yeah. They call them high priests, which I'm glad because that would then imply that bishops exist somewhere in the world. So I'm just, yeah. unless it's just like a localization, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he shows them that if they can, dr- they can draw Usoe out by killing one of her pawns, then Mother Flame and Father Universe will come and, and punish her. And be like, oh, you're a naughty girl. You're a naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> He's not the Messiah. He's just a naughty, naughty boy. (laughs) (laughs) The next day, they hear a loud noise like that of cages opening. And Broadfoot explains that the three horsemen, I mean, sorrows, uh, have been released. Malady, starvation, and slaughter. Fantastic. Uh, Dane and Numer convince Broadfoot to help them control even one of them, to which he agrees. They choose Malady. Um, Good answer. Really unnerving during this current uh, panini we're all in. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And then Broadfoot leaves. Because in, like, the thing... So, Malady's, like, this giant rat spirit. And he caught, like, in the vision of what he's doing, he's just in Port Cain, just, like, making everyone sick. And everyone's coughing on each other. And it's like, oh, God. Yeah. Wear some masks, y'all. Social distance. Uh, Social and, and it's such a, and you And we know that it's, like, everybody's on top of each other in that city. And so yeah, it's, do. like... And, and then people, like, try to help a man who's choking and, like, giving him water. And he's... And then just, just like, spreading this, it to all like, of them. This, yeah, ooh. and she, they can, like, see it. I'm like, ugh, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so Broadfoot leaves, and now it's just just the Darkings and uh, and Dane and Numer. Dunair and Name. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Dunair and Name. <laughs> uh, they take a nap to wait out the heat of the day, and as she wakes up, Dane hears a meeting between Ozorn and his commanders, basically, which tells her that the Badger and Gold Streak are making headway with the other Darkings. Um, because it's like, he's like, no, I don't have anything to report. And everyone else are like, you, f- you fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking what, mate? Yes, like, say. That's, <laughs> like, that's pretty much like the. And then he, he, like, kills someone with one of his Darkings again or something like that. I don't fucking remember. Yeah. No, no, no. With his Stormwing magic this time. That's it. But yeah. That's just, like, dude. He's just a on, real dude. testy bitch. Like, he just really calm is. down, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, after waking, she sees a vision in the water that ten ships from the Copper Isles are making their way to Port Legan, flying battle flags. She and Numair hurry on uh, because they're both like, God, we got to get there now. And it's like, dudes. <laughs> Just, just chill, um, guys. Just, just gotta always be about them. Um, <laughs> she and Numer hurry on. They go through a creepy stone forest, basically. They're like these pillars, um, and they look creepy. Which and does when that she... mean that that's where um, Barja is from, Queen Barja of Stone Forest? Oh, that I am would make just sense. now realizing. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool! I, I didn't it. think about that. So. 
I'll bet you they were just trying to bring him to <laughs> Barsha. It's true. So they go through the stone forest. They make it out the other side and they have to like, to get where they need to go. There's like this chaos vent that's overflowing. So they need to skirt between the chaos liquid, which is what I've just, I decided to call it. Chaos fluid, chaos liquid. Chaos liquid. Um, <laughs> chaos fluid sounds funny, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to call it chaos fluid Chaos fluid. Now. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I, uh, I'm i no longer gender fluid. I'm now chaos fluid. <laughs> or gender chaos. I feel, ooh, what is your gender chaos? Gen- I feel chaos. like that's way better than... <laughs> that's actually going to be my oh. answer now. Oh, my God. <laughs> my gender is chaos. Oh, fuck yeah. I love that for um, you, especially. So they walk in the narrow space between the, the chaos fluid and the edge of the cliff. After skirting it, Nomer gets attacked by sentient rocks. Like, in my brain, it was Galaxy Quest. Mm-hmm. That's what it was to me. <laughs> um, you know. So, uh, Dane steps back to get a good shot, and the cliff gives under her, and she falls. <laughs> she fall down, go boom. Um, yeah. Chapter 7. Falling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dane falls for a long time, uh, but luckily that fall is broken up by trees, so she survives, but is super beat up. And um, uh, poor poor Leaf is with her, and and is like, she, she's like, oh hey, you okay, buddy? And it goes, no. <laughs> oh, it's fine. You'll get a taste for adventure. You'll love it. Um, well, no, because because later it's like, fun, 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 fun. I know. <clears throat> in her confusion, which is probably more like a fucking concussion, uh, Dane accidentally walks herself and Leaf directly into a trap. Like, literally, she gets up, brushes herself off, and steps into a trap. Because that's Dane. Um, she struggles to break free and finds that this is a trap made from spidrin webs, magical and unbreakable from this end. Leaf can get out, so it removes the gag and blindfold, which had been a part of the trap. She tries to shapeshift her out of her bindings, but finds it impossible. Um... The Spidrin, sorry, the Spidrin descend and begin belittling and teasing Dane, which, weird choice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they just became high just like police. Just real salty and sassy. And it's like, guys, <laughs> like, just do your job. <laughs> Here. No need for the attitude. Just fucking kill me already. Right? <laughs> uh, it, here, Dane tells the Spidrin to, quote, eat my loincloth. And I could not stop laughing. <laughs> I know. Suddenly, Numer and Jelly come to the rescue. I love it. Uh, Numer depleted his magic to locate and magically transport Dane to Dane, but thought her to be dead. In his joy to find he- she's not, he kisses her, and that's all I will say on that. Uh, <laughs> Dane has a nap. That <laughs> Dane has a nap. She just she she just falls asleep uh, in Numer's arms. Um, not a like post-coital thing just she falls right asleep it's just like i suffered a lot and also remember that head trauma um yeah (laughs) uh dane takes a nap and dreams of badger and queen thayette talking about ozorn's plan so we know for sure that uh, he and goldstreak are accomplishing what they set out to do thayette says okay i'm sorry i'm confused and dane smiles because she's like the queen is never confused this is (laughs) because she's in love with the queen and i love it she is I mean, so, oh. and who isn't? Right? <laughs> oh, Dane and Numer acknowledge the problematic elements of them being in love. Well, Numer does, and Dane, in 16-year-old fashion, poo-poos his concerns. And uh, they agree that they will discuss it later after the struggles are done. Um, I'm just... I... Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm. And then, um, basically, uh, he, he's like... Oh yeah, there's the part where he's like, yeah, oh, yeah part- I was, I was canoodling uh, when you were four years old, and yeah. he's like, no, I need you to fucking understand. There is an age yeah. gap here, and it's not appropriate. Yeah. And I could very, I don't, I didn't ever want to say anything because I didn't want to influence you into thinking you loved me because yeah. that's not cool. And I do appreciate that. Yeah, it's like you're almost there, Tammy. So you're close. Almost. It's, it's, it's like it, it's so close. It's just hmm. Mm. She's 16, dude. It's like, this is where I'm like, if if this had been like, she's 20. Like, in all fairness, right? she is at marrying age for where they are. I, yeah, but I but, also, like, yeah. okay, what they could have done, right, <laughs> is they could have instead made him only 10 years older and I'd be happier. Yeah, yeah. But, like, if they'd made him, like, 
five, like, because she starts at, like, what, 15? I mean, 13 in the first mm-hmm. book. So what if he was, like, 18 in the first book? That would have been, like, he was, well, like... Well, then he wouldn't have had time to be a, a, a mage and, and the friend of Alana and... We're told that they're friends. We don't really see it, but we're told we that they're We never see it. I'm hoping that we see it in later books in the I would trilogy. love that. I need that to I happen. I need to know why they are, like, quote-unquote, yeah. best you friends. Don't, you like, don't give us young Numer and not uh, bring Alana in. I, can't, I yeah. will not accept that. They meet up with the Stormwings, and Queen Barja quickly shuts down one of the, her flock who tries to antagonize the humans. She is grateful to have been freed and wants to repay her debt so she can stop feeling like she owes Dane. So... She has agreed to transport them across the Sea of Sand, a vast and dangerous desert. We hear. <laughs> Never do we actually go in it or see anything. We know nothing of it because they are in sacks being transported. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's bananas. This, this book is bananas. So the things funny. that it skips over and the things that randomly... Like, there was no need for the Mahler thing. That didn't have to happen. <laughs> nothing happened. I know. It was like a jump scare, but not really. <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> Again, well written, but not very sensical. Um, Rikosh, being Rikosh, uh, sees that Dane is staring at Numair and puts two and two together. Dane deflects and talks with him about immortals instead. Um, Dane asks, Dane says that immortals come into being through the dreams of mortals, which did we know that? We did not. I didn't think so. I was like, no. did I forget that? Because you know me. No. I'm, I forget weird details. Uh, <laughs> no, that wasn't. Until literally this, literally this book. that moment, <laughs> that moment, um, yeah. Uh, so they, and, they, and then they talk about it later, right? In the end of the book, right? Like. <laughs> and then never again, I don't think. No, Jesus Christ. Okay, it's like they're they're done dreaming up mortals. <laughs> no more. Uh, uh, and she asks Rakash, who could have possibly dreamed up Stormwings? And she makes sure to say like seven times in it, basically. No offense. I really don't mean anything but mean by this. And and I love you. You're great. I understand your purpose. Why, who the fuck dreamed you up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And luckily he takes that in stride because he's like, this is my best friend. Because he has realized <laughs> that they're best friends. Um, Rikosh tells Dane that there was a human traveler who found death from war wherever she went, just sitting there and festering both literally and metaphorically. She wished there were creatures of war who feasted on leftover- on the leftovers of war. Uh, this way, she reasoned, people couldn't pretend there was glory in a warrior's death. Dane- Which, like, bitchin'. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm like, <laughs> I did this chick. I would like, I would really like there to be, like, just randomly like the short- stories of this woman, and we just, we find out she's who created the, uh, Stormwings, like, towards the very end of a book. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. That would be fantastic. Tammy. Tammy. Please. <laughs> I know you don't have your plate full already. Uh, <laughs> exactly. With, like, 17 books you're writing. Um, yeah. We stand an ADHD queen. <laughs> hell yes. Um, Dane said it hasn't put an end to the war. And Rakash reminds her that they've been behind the barrier so long, humans have forgotten them. He notes that those who think themselves sneaky to try to bribe Stormwings are the first to die, not the survivors. He's like, nah, those fuckers think that they can skirt around it. Um, And then he goes away. Uh, (laughs) The Stormwings arrive on the other side of the Sea of Sand and their debt repaid, leave them to get through the Dragonlands on their own. (laughs) It's like the Eagles. They're they're there for a moment (laughs) in Lord of the Rings and and The Hobbit. (laughs) Exactly. To the Dragonlands on their own. Uh, they come to a fiery curtain, which serves as the portal to the Dragonlands, I guess, and are told, yeah, I, I, I guess by the portal, I guess it's a sentient portal, um, uh, to turn the fuck around. Uh, I figured it was Diamond Flame. It could have been, I guess. It felt like it was just the portal. Or like a PA. <laughs> right? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> hey, you kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Step away from the door. Um, new, <laughs> new mayor name drops and says, uh, Dane is the guardian of Sky Song, kitten. Uh, and the portal is like, oh yeah, prove it. So Dane is like, fine, I will. And pushes her way through the flames. Uh, <laughs> I, she makes it. She does okay. She's a little hurt, but it's fine. <laughs> new mayor follows her and he's like, what the hell? <laughs> and, uh, passing the test, they're told to wait there for their guides. Yeah. Uh, chapter eight, The Dragonlands, <laughs> another chapter where nothing fucking happens. Um, there's, a, there's a dragon moot. 
So, after entering the Dragonlands, Dane and Yume are met by two juvenile dragons who are adorable, named Scamp and Grizzle. Um, I don't, they're, they're not important to the story in any way, but I still love them. They are. They're good. Um, they uh, say they will take them to their grandsire to discuss what's up, as he's one of Sky Song's clan. I guess her actual grandfather? Like, it's very murky yes. to me if he's the actual grandfather. No, he is. He is okay, because, he is. Um, yeah, her, because, uh, because, because Sky Song's mom was his was daughter. Was his daughter. Yeah, okay. But everybody calls him <laughs> grand, grandsire, so, like, that's, that. Yeah, has that's the why confusion. I was a little confused. But, um, so he's Sky Song's grandfather. On their way to meet their grandsire, Diamond Flame, they are found by a dragon who was apparently part of the separatist movement. <laughs> I, I, what? So the separatist movement is apparently the drag like dragon supremacists. Yes. Who think that they should be in charge of all of the realms and they should just go kill all of the mortals. And then that's just like never addressed again. <laughs> it's that's because a uh, fucking diamond flame is a good ruler and doesn't let the supremacists <laughs> rise to power. It's just I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like it's just it's so bizarre to me. Okay. Um <sighs> Jewel Claw, the asshole, uh, calls a dragon meat to discuss, uh, decide the fate of the mortals. And he's like, kill them. And it's just like, why? They arrive at the dragon meat and shit happens, but none of it is ultimately very important to the story. So I can skip it. Um, in the end, literally nothing happens. They fight for like 20 pages and not even like actually fighting. They're just like snapping back at each other and arguing. It's, it's like dragons just... It's, it's vaguely similar to that scene in... Um... Is it the second Star Wars at uh, um, where where we see the, them in the um, in the Senate, and and they're oh, just okay. like you meant the actual episode two. Oh, yeah, I actual thought you meant two. Empire Strikes Back. Oh, no, no, no. So I was trying to say prequel, but it wouldn't come out. Um, okay, but yeah. So it's basically that <laughs> where yeah, you're just okay. listening to them debate, and it's like, yeah, I'm sure this is important, not, but <laughs> but I just don't. I I do not care about what's going on right now. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, in the end, the ancestor dragon named Rainbow, who is <laughs> Rainbow, the supreme dragon, um, who is 10,000 years old. And blind, um, but still uses yes. things like sea. Yeah. Um, rules that they are allowed in and tells Jewelclaw to fuck off. If I see you in the next century, I will not be as kind as I am right now. Like, oh, okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so Diamond That's Rainbow, Rainbow talking. I know, exactly. <laughs> Diamond Flame and like his bear. mate, Wingstar, um, mm -hmm. agree to take the mortals back to their own realm. They do this via a really cool traveling spell that requires the dragons to fly up in a spiral and then back down. Um, and then I wrote, I love dragons. Um, <laughs> the Stormwings tag along because the Stormwings are now just there. And they're like, okay, we'll go with you. <laughs> and it's like, you guys literally just fucked off for that part where we could have been killed. And now you're just going to come with us anyway. Dude, not cool. Not, no. No. <laughs> Like, well, you made it. Good job. <laughs> the dragons... They're very fair weather friends, and I appreciate yes. that about them. <laughs> yeah. The dragons first take them to Port Kane, as Diamond Flame is curious as to why Broadfoot is there. Uh, we find that he's still holding his own against Malady, but that it is taking a lot out of him. He's hmm. stronger than he thought. Um, we find that... Oh, wait. While in Port Kane, they talk to Duke Gareth, the Elder, and Bury. They find out that the enemy has fled from the area, but they and her forces are headed down to Port Lagan right into a trap of the ships coming from the Copper Isles. <gasps> the whole group, dragons, mortals, and stormwings, decide to head to Port Lagan. And then they're just not in a trap. It just doesn't happen because the next chapter... <laughs> they're, they're, they're just fine. Um, the next chapter is called The Battle of Lagan. <laughs> okay, this chapter is weird, but it starts with an excellent scene. <laughs> <laughs> we see how far the kingdom has come as dragons, queens riders, knights, animals, ogres, and centaurs are all working together to bring supplies to shore. And I love it. This yeah. is the shit I'm here for. This is what I wish that fucking turf had done with the Harry Potter books. <laughs> We're particularly irritated at this right now because of a stupid <laughs> YouTube commenter. <laughs> Fayette is sending Dane and Diamond Flame to bring some magical tools to King Jonathan and the Lord of Lagan. I didn't put his name because it doesn't fucking matter. Like, they name drop his wife, too, and it's like, why? Why, why do I care? <laughs> his name's like Iman or something yeah, like Iman, that? Yeah, Iman, and then his, his uh, wife's name Marielle. is Marielle. And, and I was questioning it, and, and Boyfriend Meister's like, well, I mean, 
it, do they come up in the next book? I was like, I don't think so. This battle comes up in the next book. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. The battle is talked about. It's like an entire part of someone's backstory. Um, yeah. <laughs> an asshole, but... <sighs> Sorry. We'll get continue. to that next month. Um, <laughs> yeah, we will. Um... Oh, one of the items is the Dominion Jewel, which is which the king's champion retrieved from a Khmer god in her fourth book. So it's like, <laughs> ooh, every fourth book. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come up in, D- in Kel's fourth book. It doesn't. It actually. doesn't. No, I know. That's why I'm. That's why I said it. <laughs> Just like I always said, the Skinners would be important, and then they disappear entirely because I guess yeah. Badger took them out. Yeah, I Badger guess. got rid of them. We don't know how. We don't, we don't know, know how. where they went, but they're gone. We never it's saw fine. any of it. <laughs> it's fine, kid. I got rid of them for you. Um, <laughs> it's like, they're just like hidden under the rug. Right. <laughs> he just buried them in the forest. <laughs> like I gave him shallow graves. <laughs> little did we know he was actually like a, 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 little, a little mafia dude. <laughs> <laughs> Give him concrete shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real reason they just call him the badger. <laughs> Yeah, that's the badger. We we don't refer to him by his name. Um, <laughs> though she doesn't like that this this will separate her from Numair, Goldstreak, the badger, and Rakosh, she can't leave Kitten alone and needs to go back to her sweet baboo. Uh, Rakosh promises to tell Ozorn Dane sends her best before killing him, and that he will try to get her a souvenir before his a souvenir of his death. He, there's also like a lovely scene where they're like just like real bitches at each other and everybody's staring like no. oh my god and 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 Rakasha laughs and he's like oh that's my friend I deserve that I deserved it you're right uh, <laughs> I know it was great so good. I just love I love it they're so catty <clears throat> New Mayor uh, sends Jelly who has been in uh, he, Jelly decided that New Mayor is their person and I, I just every fucking darking finds someone and they're like this is mine no no yeah you are mine. You will protect me now. <laughs> yeah. Um, the king has one. Yeah. I, I do mention it. Um, <laughs> but uh, Numer sends Jelly with Dane, and I kind of hate him for that. Um, but uh, when she makes it to Jonathan, she is reunited with Onua for the first time in a while, and I love it because she is such a big sister, and they are good. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that in chapter one, that Jonathan has gone salt and pepper with the stress of battle. Uh <laughs> Um, All right. Uh, Diamond Flame says he will take care of the ships, and Dane reminds him that his daughter fell to a fleet of ships. He reminds her that his daughter had been young and not as powerful. She was a child? (laughs) It's like, wait, I I care for her baby. Are you telling me this is a child baby? (laughs) Um, She was only like like 10 centuries old. She was like 800 years old, I think he says. Something like that. It's like a little little baby. (laughs) Um... Yeah, not a, a hundred centuries, like fucking rainbow. It's like, screw you, man. You need to die already. Whoa. <laughs> not to rainbow. Look. <laughs> um, the dragons, Diamond Flame and Wingstar, proved to be useful in many ways. They use their magic and flame to begin the attack. Thanks to the presence of mature dragons, wyverns are nowhere to be seen. Oh, they were uh, they were a nuisance at the beginning of the book. I forgot to say that because uh, we went straight into the Sk- Skinners, but they did talk about it briefly. <laughs> yeah, and and that's why Kitten didn't come with them to the yeah. realm of the gods because she was resting after fighting off um, wyverns psychically. Yes, <laughs> just exerting her just will over them. A, a little toddler just fucking fighting people's battles. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the battle proceeds and so I just did it in a bunch of like uh, little notes because it's very detailed read it go for it uh, it's 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 interesting to read but there's nothing that actually like happens at the no, I'm, so I'm just gonna give you the headlines soaked in at um, all so let's see. There are teenage riders heading into battle. Uh, arrows fly. Dane takes the shape of a bird and takes out some of the flying attackers. Jonathan uses the Dominion Jewel very briefly, uh, like twice. Um, Taka uses the extent of his basilisk, basilisk powers and is kick ass. Uh, Stormwings fight Stormwings, which is like, whoa, which is how um, uh, Rakash and Barja and I think her mate uh, get there. He- Heka or whatever his name is. Um, Hibok? Hibok, that's it. Thank you. Because it always makes me think of Rebecca, and I can never, like, <laughs> actually get his name. Um, Dane summons the people, friend, her people friends, to defend their home. People with a capital P. I should just really say animals. Uh, Jelly, Leaf, and Inkblot, the darking who has become Jonathan's companion, do I like their part. Name Inkblot. I know. 
<laughs> That's so cute. So good. They do their part to incapacitate the enemy. They're actually, you know, they're pretty good. Um, and I'm really proud of Jelly because Jelly's a little scaredy and 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 fights very valiantly all the time. Yeah. You go, Jelly. Um, for the most part, Dane has kept out of the actual fight, so she can do recon and deliver messages. She's 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 taken her golden evil form very frequently. Um, a smoke snake, which sounds like a hydra serpent thing, um, appears and causes to and causes many to retreat. But Dummy Raul charges in. I legit couldn't remember if he died or not, so this was a very tense moment for me. He's um, literally in the next series. I didn't and remember. Very like prominent. my brain was like, is he? Does he? Does he come back? Why do I feel like? And, and, and I should have remembered because I'm like, no, that's why you love him because he's in. <laughs> yeah, no, the only people in that original tree, like group of friends who died are Alex and Francis. <laughs> Bet y'all forgot about Francis. Bet y'all forgot about Francis. Because <laughs> he never says two words. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's just there to die, okay? Um, um, shit. He could be done for. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he could be done for, uh, but Stormwings, the Badger, and Goldstreak come to assist. Dane is stuck on the sidelines watching the fight, so when the dying creature thrashed about and threw Rikosh against the rocks, all she could do was watch as the man who had become her friend died. I cried so hard. So yeah. hard. And it's like, it's another one of those ones where I'm like, I know this is gonna happen. Yeah. And then it happens, and I'm like, I... You bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, this moment, bleak as it is, seems to serve as a catalyst. So the army for Tortal gains strength against Ozorn's army. Suddenly, like, Barja falls to his body and wails. And, and people kind of yeah. pause and look around. And, and then she's, like, angry because that was her most loyal follower. He is the yeah. one who actually came to free them from Ozorn's uh, captivity. He yeah. was the only one to believe in them. And now he's gone. And she is fucking pissed. She gonna kill yeah. some bitches. And I love it. Because um, you go. Um, <clears throat> with eagle eyes, Dane can see Ozorn in the distance, fleeing to safety. Since Rakosh couldn't be the one to kill Ozorn, she must. She meets a little resistance from Taka, but is granted permission by Jonathan to go get him. <laughs> there are some bits in this last bit that I didn't actually write down because it makes me sad. But I'll, I will say it when it happens. Okay. Just... Just so you know. <laughs> so in her bird form, whatever the fuck bird she's in in that moment, um, mm -hmm. she catches up to Ozorn uh, to fall right into his trap. He has two storm wings and three winged apes to do his fighting for him. Ozorn tries to antagonize her, but Dane is truly out of fucks to give. She makes quick work of his cronies and then hones it on him. And the darkings try to help her and Ozorn makes them explode. So Jelly and Leaf died. Um... And yes, I cried more for the Darkings than yes. for Rakash. Yeah. But. Well, especially Leaf. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Leaf, like. He has a little hat. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> when they're on the um, flying in the slings, he's saying fun, fun, fun. But then when they're riding on the dragons, he's saying more fun, more fun. <laughs> when, when they're so. just standing around the dragons, he's like, too big. <laughs> I love him. Ugh. Anyway. So. Uh, but they do manage to, like, uh, go into, like, the things and choke them, right? Yeah. So, it, so their death isn't quite in vain. The, yeah, they kill a couple of the, they kill the storm wings or something like that. Because she becomes different types of birds and just fucking, like, rips through wings so that they fall to their deaths. Um, <laughs> which is like, ah, that, yeah, that's a good, you can see where she's very powerful against animal type beasts mm -hmm. because she knows anatomy. Yep. <laughs> um, so both of them tiring, Dane turns into a wildcat to try to attack Ozorn, but she loses control of the shape and finds herself out of energy to be able to shapeshift into anything with wings. However, she is saved by a flock of gulls who catch her and gently put her on the ground. And then she's like, I owe you guys one. And then they leave. And that's it. <laughs> Um, Ozorn follows, uh, down as well. He falls, at, but he hits a bunch of trees on the way down. Um, <laughs> so, you know, 
Uh, Ozorn then tells her about how Usoe is going to make him king of the world or whatever short-sighted bullshit he's talking about now. <laughs> but Dane slits his throat and his stomach with the badger's claw. She's, like, pretending that, you know, she's, like, faking him out. She's got, like, visibly has, like, this rock in her hand. And then the other hand, she's, like, pa- like palming her badger claw. So he sees the rock and takes the bait and she just fucking kills him. Slashes and it's him. really awesome. It really is. Um... Killing Ozorn and destroying the obsidian that he wore, which it got mentioned a couple times in the book, but it's not like, it wasn't super prominent. So this was kind of like, oh, right, he's wearing an obsidian, I guess. (laughs) So she shatters that. um, And that brings uh, Usoe out of hiding. She goes to grab Dane, and then suddenly they are transported to the empty space where the gods exist. <laughs> Mithros demands Mother Flame and Father Universe to punish her, and they pull that we're not mad, just disappointed routine <laughs> on her. She's banished to a cage in her realm for until the next star is born. Um, which, like, that's not, like, a very long time. Like, in the grand, like, in Maybe the it universe, is in their universe. In... Does does physics not work the same in their universe? Maybe. This is, uh, like... The planet in which Tortal is is on, like, the edge of a galaxy, and so, like, they Maybe. are far away from the other, like, But bits. things would still be... Are we talking about, like, in our in our galactic neighborhood? Is that is that what we're, like, what what kind... Or just the galaxy in, in like, a star group? Like, what what is the scope for <laughs> the next star being born? I think they just create stars, so it's, like, just, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm just There's like, no science here. The gods do it, okay? Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but Faithful is there, and it doesn't have anything to do with anything else that Faithful is there with the goddess. But Dane gets to pet Faithful and notices his purple eyes, and <laughs> it's I, it's very important to me personally. Yes. Because <laughs> it's just like, <clears throat> pet, pet, yes. Yes. Get the pets. Uh, the great gods tell Dane that god-worn people cause chaos wherever they go, so she has to choose between the mortal realm or the divine realms. Dane is like, well, I promised my mom that I would come visit her, and a promise is a promise, so I guess I have to choose the divine <laughs> realms. Uh, the g- gods decide that some immortals can stay if they want to in the mortal realms, um, and Dane speaks on behalf of the Stormwings to not have them imprisoned in the divine realms because they can't help their nature. Uh, Dane says she picks the Divine Realms because of her promise to... But Sarah says, no, you little idiot, go home. (laughs) Um, The Darkings decide to go live in the Dragonlands because why not? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Diamond Flame takes Dane and Kitten back to the Mortal Realms. Kitten showed up um, with Diamond Flame to scold (laughs) the gods for being dicks. Like, (laughs) laid into (laughs) Mithros. And Mithros is like, Diamond Flame, control your grandchild. (laughs) I will not. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like... Um, and, uh, after asking to see Sarah as the green lady, Dane returns to the mortal realms. So she finds, like, Ma, can you show me what you look like when you're the green lady? So she does, and it's just, it's nice. She's like, Ma, you're beautiful. And I love it. And it's so good. It's a great way to leave her. It is. Epilogue. <laughs> Dane is returned well, to a- Epilogue to this tale of sadness. It's <laughs> true by his royal dadness. Royal dadness. Uh, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> Dane is returned to a dying battle. <laughs> uh, we do need to point out that um, oh, yeah. fucking neither of us brought up the magical, the magical battle between Numair and the and Eden Haydensra. <laughs> we didn't mention that at all. The fucking the scaren. It really mage. doesn't matter. It doesn't know, make any but it's difference. It's just so to anything. funny that neither of us brought it up, even though it's like an important part at the end. It's just, it just has no, like, I don't get to know this Scanran war mage who could have been a black robe, but he didn't like the structure of the university, so he dropped out, man. Mm. Real <laughs> I don't know why he sounded like uh, that. But. Um, but we did forget to mention that uh, uh, they go back on... Um, well, I mean, we, you said that D- Diamond Fling takes them back, but it's because... Um, He's like, ah, da, da, da. I don't want you, like, sending them and they're in the middle of nowhere because gods have the tendency to just send them wherever. And I'd like to make sure that my grandchild gets to where she's going. <laughs> yeah. Dragons are ama- I love dragons. Dragons like, are sass. They, they are, yeah. They, they're truly just They're too fantastic. old to deal with anyone's shit anymore. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so anyway, Dane is returned to a dying battle, which they have won, thanks to the mysterious disappearance of most of the immortals. <laughs> weird. So weird. They just disappeared. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> when she's asked about it, she says, uh, ask Big Blue, referring to Diamond uh, Flame. And he's like, okay, I like that nickname. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, an interesting nickname. Okay. Um, it's like, oh, so. Okay. <laughs> Here, she reunites with her family. Jonathan and Thayette are together again. Raul is okay. Rakash is, isn't, so, like, that's a bummer. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kitten is with her grandfather, but comes to uh, see Dane again. I, I didn't know why that happened, but I put it in there. Uh, Tahoy cleans her face because he is a good boy. Um, he is. Because I love that doggy. Uh, Cloud is glad she doesn't have to train a new writer. <laughs> and it's like, Cloud, I've missed you these last two books. I know. <laughs> um... Onua embraces the woman, the young woman who was once her charge and is now the Slayer of Ozorn. Uh, <laughs> Dane asks where Numer is, and Onua tells her that no one has seen him, so Dane and Cloud go off to find him. Like, Cloud doesn't even need to be asked. She's like, I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> um, she finds Numer injured but alive and warning the being he assumes is an enemy to attack him while he isn't on his feet. Instead, he sees Dane and they embrace. He asks her to marry him, and she says, maybe someday, because she is still young, damn it, and he has to prove worthy of her, a task he would be happy to attempt. They head back t with much left unsaid. Dane sees the Stormwings, for whom she vouched, acting in their nature and descending upon the bodies on the field. It is a gruesome scene, but needed if the kingdoms are to maintain peace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's the book. That's the um, book. <clears throat> what did we like about it? Um... I mean, the Darkings. I love the Darkings. One. Yeah, basically. Broadfoot, fantastic. The characters yeah. in this book are just <laughs> spot on. I Everyone has such a personality, and I love that. I love the <laughs> amount of personality she was able to put into the separate Darkings. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like she wanted to do more with them, um, with all of the characters that she mentioned. Yeah. And, and that's why we get it so, everything's so episodic, because it's like... She's like, oh, I wanted to show you guys this, so let's, let's, like, here's a brief glimpse. Here you go. There's Mahler. Um, <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> Look, the great can't, the great divide. Should we go there? No. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's kind of what, that's what this fucking book that's was what this like. Book is. That's what this book was like. <laughs> oh, my it gosh. It was exactly like the Emperor Island's players. <sighs> oh, she goes into the Avatar state. Uh, <laughs> um, no, yeah, but it's just, everybody's very, uh, lots of good characters, just not a lot of, of time to know them. Yeah. Everything's very um, brief. Yeah. I do, I like the setting and everything. I, it feels a little Alice in Wonderland at times, mm -hmm. which isn't a bad thing. Um, it just is also... Now to the things that I don't like. It's just, it it's very disjointed, I feel. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like this probably because a lot of things had to get cut. Yes. Um, I That's what it feels like to me. Like, we're just missing chunks. Um, because at the time, it was still, you pretty much had to be within 300 pages for a children. Like, a young adult book. That was just, like, the norm. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't... I would like to note that... Uh... Would you like to know where, uh, what is his name? Galen? No. Gainel? Gainel? Yeah. Um, I brought in the god of dreams, Gainel. Oh, it's right fucking here in front of me. God damn it. A crucial player in this eternal struggle between the great gods and the queen of chaos. He was born in my mind as a combination of the writer Neil Gaiman Sandman character and the, and Neil Gaiman himself. Oh my god. And suddenly I understand, I understand everything. Um, this is why I'm oh okay my god. with him conceptually. <laughs> oh my god. So there's that. <laughs> well, okay. That's in my brain now. Yep. I had to, I made an effort to not imagine Ozzy Osbourne, by the way. Yeah. I'm like, no. No, I, I just, I left him. Refuse. I left him the way I've always had him. <laughs> Yeah, I, I absolutely uh, refuse. I will. Uh, I apparently have managed to block out every time when I'm actually reading it that uh, Rakash has blonde hair. Yeah. Because, like, my brain <laughs> read that and was like, well, I thought he had black hair. <laughs> because apparently <laughs> I just keep imagining him with black hair and that's all that matters to me. <laughs> See, my brain has him as, like, strawberry blonde. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's never said, but my brain's like, yeah, he's like a strawberry blonde. 
I assume he's got like Targaryen look. God, but the things we don't like. Um, um, the new mayor shit. Like, yeah, it's just so gross. It's it it's just really squeaks me out. I yeah. Not and a huge fan. It's just so hard. It's so hard to appreciate the book outside of it because I spent the entire book just kind of going, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. And it definitely brings, like, this... I would have said this was, like, a four-star book, and it definitely brings it down to more like a three and a half for me <laughs> because it's just the entire book. There's evidence of this where it's like, and then she saw a flash of something in his eyes and it left her breathless, and it's like, or, she's or a child. She, like nuzzles his chest or something and he's yeah, like stop i can't concentrate when you do that <laughs> it's like dude yeah, i don't like how like... they describe uh, how, how tammy is like okay she kicks the book off and she's like i am describing her as a woman with full lips and she's got a slight ample bosom and it's <laughs> just like oh okay like i know they sort of started doing that in the last book yeah uh because you know she had to be sexualized there too um but yeah yeah i just it just bothers me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Have right. age-appropriate relationships where there isn't a dynamic difference. Yeah. Maybe if she had been, like, 15 in the first book. That's what I've been saying. i done been yeah. saying that. And then maybe she's, like, 20 in this book. Exactly. That would be, that I would be fine with. Mm -hmm. She's 20. Yeah. And he's 27 or whatever. Yeah. That would be great. But no. But no. <sighs> okay. Um, uh, do we have anything else to say about the book? Because no, honestly, I mean, I feel like... just, there's just not, there's not, like, a lot happens, but at the same time, nothing happens. Yeah. It's, it's a very anticlimactic, like, final for the series. Mm -hmm. And I think that's partially because of, like, power creep. You know what I mean? Where, yeah. like each book has to have higher stakes. So when they defeat Ozorn in the last book and like causes the collapse of an empire in a way, like it feels very final. Mm -hmm. Like that was the climax. And then this book should have like, it was trying to go even harder, but it tried too hard. And so everything's just kind of. I think she thought that if she went, um, Th this macro having it be in the realm of the gods and like yeah. involving a struggle for power on on a, a celestial level like yeah. i think she thought that was what did it but um it didn't no. <laughs> like no i get it we wanted to, and, and 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 i also understand that this is the story she wanted to tell and so yeah. it, just because it does, it, it, this is how she saw it all going. And like, do I, I have, per, have like a lot of, of, of invested in this one? No, but it, it's, it's the finality of Dane's story. So I can appreciate it as it is a well-written book. Just yes. not important, <laughs> but I felt that about most of the Alana books. So yeah, I mean, valid. Yeah. I mean, all of these prior books that we've already read are just there to um, world build in the universe of Kel, the yeah. Caledry of yeah. Mandolin. That, um, way, that way we come in and everything's fully formed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's which, uh, uh, sister, what book are we reading next month? Next month, we are reading the first, the first of the Protector of the Small Books, First Test. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I love I, Kel. God, Kel is literally <sighs> the best protagonist yes. in anything ever. And she taught me a lot of very good things yeah. about interacting with other people in, like, bullying situations of just, like, if you don't respond, they it's no fun for them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, huh. <laughs> and that is where Kel, Kel is who taught me to be the person who, when a coworker accidentally replied to an email, when she tried to forward it to make fun of me... I then messaged her back, I'm sorry, was this meant for me? <laughs> and then never brought it up to her face. Um, that's where I got that. <laughs> I'm sorry, was this for me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you meant to send this to me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's who we're really excited to see. Yes. Um, did we have any head, head cannons for this book? I don't know if I did, uh, honestly. I mean, 
No, my head not really... for the book. No, no, my head canon for the book is that it's it it, it Leaf and Jelly do an Iron Man, an Iron Man, Iron Giant, <laughs> and in the very end, they're like reforming. Yeah, I was gonna say that they, they're 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 doing what all the that that's why we see all the gods um being killed and then reforming in um the divine realms because exactly. then they just reform where exactly. their kindred are. So there you go. Exactly. That's in our version, they are actually alive. We yes. just never see them again, and that's fine because we never see yeah, half they, of these people again. I, I have like, now Miri, decided. Where did she go? <laughs> Who? Her friend from the first book. Who? I know. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Never mentioned again after his tragic death. It was such a, it, it touched our lives. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he got fridged. <laughs> he did. He got, he got fucking <laughs> deep got fridged. fridged. Like, that so. was... <laughs> You can hear us talk about that when we talk about the Halana, the first adventure. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, that's the um, the end of this podcast. Um, Long enough for you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's practically short compared to some of our others. So, beautiful. I feel book, bo- book, book podcasts. Book podcasts are, you know... Tend to be longer. They're longer. It's okay Especially when you do the whole book instead of like chapter by chapter or like yeah, segment by I segment. Mean, yeah, but that would take too long, and I have no patience I for know. anything. I I want to be reading my babies, Ariana. <laughs> I'm at we gotta get to like, the babies. Okay, but, but like, what if we did one Kel book and then one Circle of Magic book and then one Kel book and then one Circle? No, no. Okay, yeah. it's fine. I love Kel too. I love yeah. Kel. <laughs> we'll do Kel, and then we can have like a whole fucking binge of of the Circle books. I know. I'm so it'll be excited. delightful. Eight okay, fucking but- books, and then we'll take a break to have. Allie. And then (laughs) we'll come back to them. (laughs) Oh, and Becca Cooper. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm, Yeah. So, yeah. uh, Then, like, talk to y'all later. Um, (laughs) (laughs) As a reminder, I'm Risa. And I'm Ariana. And we're telling you to keep on reading.